Hello everybody and welcome back to this program. Today we're taking a deep dive onto my hi-fi setup and how you can get yourself a similar setup affordably for no more than $100. Today you're going to be joining me on my journey into how I found this setup and the patience that you need as a hi-fi enthusiast to grab yourself some of this stuff. And it's not exactly a cakewalk and a walk in the park or anything like that, it's not. You have to be patient, you have to be smart, you have to be willing to negotiate with people and maybe sometimes you're going to let go of things that you love in order to get yourself something like this. So I will go in and tell you my story about it. In my first few years of collecting hi-fi and records, I found myself wanting the cheapest possible thing to play them on. Unfortunately, that was a little bit of a messed up concept because you want to preserve this medium and play it in the way that it should be and not on some rinky-dink system like a Crosley. And I was guilty of having the big Crosley wood dark wood unit with that radio and that piano hinge that lifts up and you play your record on that on this rinky-dink little stylus that you can't even change out it's stuck it doesn't have a weight a counterweight it doesn't have those things it doesn't have those beautiful high fidelity qualities to it and that is something that you want to be looking for in your hi-fi setup used or not used but today we're talking about everything that is used in my setup, which is everything for under $100. Facebook Marketplace is a very good outlet for you to find stuff that you wouldn't usually find in antique stores or the Salvation Army. Sure, you can find a good set of speakers, maybe Sony speakers at the Salvation Army. For example, I found my subwoofer at a Salvation Army or Savers store. My subwoofer is a kind of a hulking, not powered, light enough, but big and hulking sound-wise. The quality is gorgeous on this subwoofer, and it is from Sony, and it matched my tower Sony uh, loudspeakers, and that is what made me want to buy that for five bucks. I will try that out. I'll hook it up to my sound system at the time, and we'll see what, what, what what's what. And so what you want to do is go on Facebook Marketplace and wait for what you want. If you want one of these silver silver puppies with the um with the with the silver facing here. If you want one of those by all means, you wait and you find it. They are on Facebook Marketplace. And in my instance, sometimes you're going to have to bargain away some things that you loved uh vinyl wise in a trade off to in or in able to get that. I had Fortunately, I had doubles of Beatles records, and Beatles records in the vinyl community are essentially like high-quality silver. Not gold, but high-quality silver that can get you what you want if you want to trade. If I have good Beatles records cleaned up in sleeves with new inner sleeves and new outer sleeves, and I suggest that to someone on Facebook Marketplace who's got one of these silver-faced, beautiful, retro, vintage um, receivers, uh, they might say, yeah, sure, I will take all your Beatles records and, you know, some Led Zeppelin, I'll take some of those and we can do a trade. And in my case, that is what happened. I went to his house, I traded the records, and he gave me this for free. This vintage silver receiver is a Nico STA 7070 receiver at $150 value. I got it free on a trade. This is what you're going to be plugging all of your outputs into. You're going to be plugging your speakers, your turntable. You're going to be using the phono outputs, maybe perhaps the auxiliary outputs, and you're going to be using the radio from time to time as I do. One of these silver-faced retro vintage units from the early 70s is the way to go for me as it is just a piece of art. All I did was trade some Beatles records to a fellow named Corey and he gave me this because some people are kind. They want to help out for people first starting out. In doing so, I traded up from my Crosley unit and my little rinky-dink thing to this. And that was night and day for me. It was a, the best thing that I ever could have done 
for my hi-fi and listening experience. The turning dial for the radio is art. It is beautiful. It it spins like butter. It is gorgeous. It's got the loudness feature. It's got some toggles where you can do the treble and the equalization of the bass and treble. You don't really have a lot of wiggle room there because you don't have a midsection, but you do have the treble and bass that you can play around with. It was a dream to be able to find one of these for me, and it might be for you, and if so, check Facebook Marketplace and places like yard sales and stuff. See if you could trade things. See if, if you don't have the money, see what they can do. Um, don't be afraid to haggle in this community. They're helpful. People want to help you. The next thing I'm going to tackle is my techniques from the 70s turntable um, and this I found also on Facebook marketplace for $80 with the Sony tower speakers sometimes people don't know what they have and what they can charge for things they're gonna put up a listing for this at a price that they think it's worth and to be honest a turntable like this is worth more money than what they were putting on their listing so I ate that right up and I I messaged them and went and got it that day. I was so excited. I was a kid on Christmas. Because not only did I get a brand new Techniques turntable with the counterweight, with the stylus, with everything included, everything worked beautifully, but I also got two three-foot loudspeakers that work beautifully. And I complemented that later on with a subwoofer from a um, discount store for $5 that just enhances the experience for me. All in all, the turntable is about a $90 value. The speakers are about a $25 value nowadays, but you can't go wrong with these. They, they do everything. They've got the tweeter, they've got the bass, they've got the high end, they've got the mid, they've got everything. And it, it makes for an excellent listening experience without it being high end and brand new from 2020. No, you don't need that. You need to use equipment that was popular when vinyl was the most popular because that made the sound perfect for people. That's the only way people were listening to things other than 8-track and the radio. The highest form of fidelity for listening was vinyl and so the products that they were putting out at the time were highest of quality. You want to use that. I believe wholeheartedly in vintage hi-fi setups. Not to say that a brand new hi-fi setup from 2020 is not going to give you the highest end listening experience. Of course it will. But so will this. This I could see you finding in one of those high-end furniture stores for about 200 easily. This deep media cabinet, it's big, it's hulking, and it was $25 at the Salvation Army. I scooped that right up and put it right in the back of my car and brought it right home. Cleaned it up, all you have to do is clean some of this stuff up, and it's like new. It's the best. It holds my box sets and compilations. It holds my receiver. It holds my grails. It holds all that stuff. You just have to be patient, and you'll find what you want. You don't have to save for years and years. You don't. You really don't. And sometimes that can be hard. I was I was on there night and day trying to find something so fast. My fiance would tell me, just wait, just wait, just wait. You'll find what you want. And she was right. And she was right. So this Sony subwoofer that I found is about a $60 to $80 value. It is not powered. It's a um, passive amplifier and it um, does the trick. I, put, I found that I put it in the corner of the room facing out and you don't even realize it's there until it's gone. When I turn off the subwoofer on my receiver, I instantly hear a difference. There's not as much low end. There's not as much rumble. This thing packs a punch for five bucks and it's Sony. I believe in Sony. I love that brand. They can't go wrong in my eyes. So I was seeing other pictures of other people's cozy little hi-fi setups and they were putting their stuff on stand so that the listening experience was a little bit higher up and the towers weren't right on the ground sitting there right on the ground. You know, you want it to be raised up a little bit because if you're sitting on a couch listening, that's where you're, you're already raised up in a seat. You're not sitting on the ground. So you want the tower speakers to be up enough for you to get that sound wave right to your ears and it, and it flows through the room. And what you want it to do is have about a stands that are about this tall. If you have giant three foot tower speakers, you want one foot to two foot raised platforms for the tower speakers to be sitting on. And in this case, I made my own. These were nothing at Lowe's to buy. 
you can buy for both of these I probably paid about 60 um, and you just I got the legs and I got the screws and I painted it white and I got a little felt pads so that the speakers can sit on the felt pads I made these myself and I'm proud of them and they came out great I made a point in my mind to make a vintage design with it so I had those sort of those peg those peg legs come out like that because um, I wanted that kind of retro feel to them and I was able to get that at all at Lowe's for $60 so, like I said, you want your stuff to be raised up a little bit. If it means you're just buying a used set for your tower speakers to sit on, or your bookshelf speakers, you want, you know, maybe stands about this tall for book bookshelf speakers, then by all means you can find that probably on Facebook Marketplace as well, or if you want to find it on, you know, eBay or, um, you know, the antique stores or the Salvation Army. Next, I'm going to talk about my tone arm and audio cartridge here. I use just a basic P-mount Audio-Technica cartridge. This was about a $40 value, and I got it actually for $40 on Amazon. I wanted to purchase high-end in that regard because the stylus is what makes everything work with your hi-fi setup. It's what it's what rides through those grooves. It's what you hear. You hear the stylus. Some styluses can be bright, some can be muddled, some can be great in the mid-tones but horrible in the top and, and bottom. You want to be able to get yourself a great cartridge, so don't skimp in that department. When I got my Techniques QD33, the stylus on it was gone. It was gone. I, pl I played, you know, a vinyl record and it wasn't there nothing was there anymore they recommend that you switch them out every few months to a year and I agree with that if you're playing records all the time for sure with the amount of rotations it wears down the stylus it wears down the diamond and in the stylus I use an Audio Technica AT85 EP cartridge you can't go wrong with this. It's it's the it's it's a high-end basic stylus for your records. It's great. The most important thing you want in your turntable if you're buying used or new is the counterweight on the back of the tone arm. You want a turntable with a counterweight as that will distribute the balance so that the needle isn't driving into those grooves. You want it to sit a little higher in the groove so that it is not destroying your records over time. So I do recommend a turntable with a counterweight. That is very important. Lastly, I'll talk about the lamp. I found this at Marshall's and it was on sale for $10 from like $30 because they thought it was broken. The wood stand from the base was loose. It needed to be tightened on the bottom, honestly. So I got it for $10. You wanna be able to have a light shining down on your record if so you can see the grooves. So if, if it's late at night, you're having a party, you don't want to have all the lights on in the room, you want to keep the mood, you want a light on your setup. And that's exactly what I have. This AudioQuest brush that I use is very important as you want to be able to brush the vinyl like this and hold it there for about, you know, three to five seconds, two rotations, three rotations, and then take it off the vinyl. And you want to clean it out by going like this. You don't have to do this every time, but I do it at least every time I play and when I switch sides. It's just become a ritual as to how it goes. And a lot of other people I see do the same. Now again, you don't have to if your vinyl's amazing and clean or you're throwing a party and you don't want to be having to brush the vinyl like that. Just flip it over, put it on. If it's clean, you're fine. But if you never know the amount of surface dust that your stylus is going to pick up if it's there, so you want to eliminate this with a anti-static brush. Very important. I got this one from AudioQuest and I didn't skimp on this either. This was about $20 and it was a great, great purchase. I mean, it's going to last me the rest of my life. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's It's got nothing on it. It's You can clean this by going like this about 10 times. So that way, there's no residue on the bristles of the brush here on the anti-static bristles and there's no surface dust on your vinyl and that's exactly what you want when starting out or throughout your entire listening career. I want to also talk about the record mat that I've got. I went with a cork mat instead of going with the basic silicone 
black mat that came with the Techniques turntable, um, I was told that the cork mat will bring out your bass. I'm not exactly one to see that. I didn't see that, the difference in the tone and the sound. It's aesthetically pleasing, and I absolutely love the look of it. I went with the mid-tone sand color cork. Why not personalize it a little bit and not keep it exactly as it came? A lot of people I now have been seeing have this thick acrylic platter, and that looks gorgeous, but that is going to run you so high. We want to be saving on our on our setup because you're going to get a great, great sound for minimal dollars. If you love a bargain, get a setup like this. You can't go wrong. Honestly, I've, I've enjoyed records through this day after day and it is gorgeous and all I have to do in the future is maybe buy a new stylus. Everything else is going to last. So again, folks, you can get a beautiful quality listening setup under $100. All you really need to buy for the most part, is the stylus and the anti-static brush that will run you the highest risk. Perhaps the receiver, but I highly suggest trying to trade your records with somebody if you collect doubles of certain records. That is what I did and I'm so thankful I did it. Will I be finding those records again in the future? Of course I will because I love the hobby. I love to crate dig. I love to look in different stores and find those things again. So of course I'm going to find them again and I'll be able to play it through this receiver. I think it has about 30 watts, but it's going to get you a lot of power. A lot of sound to fill a room that's medium sized. And it seems to do a great job. And yes, this is a solid state amplifier. It is not a tube amp but you don't have to go with tubes in my mind. Yes, I would love to upgrade to a tube setup in the future, but I know that's going to cost me. Folks, if that was informative in any way, you do not have to break your bank to get yourself a high quality vinyl setup from a different era. So folks, happy collecting. I want to see your setups. I want to see your rigs and your gear. Um, I want to see what you got and list the price down below of what you got it for. A bargain is always great and as I said people in this community are willing to help people out who are just starting out or upgrading their systems. I really hope my video was informative and helped you out and maybe helped you ditch the Crosley and maybe upgrade to a system similar to this. So I highly recommend getting yourself a vintage setup. You don't have to go with new. It's got that warmer tone as vinyl should be experienced and that is what you want with your setup. Really hunt, be patient and you will be rewarded for it by really being smart and going for those deals that you love and clean it up a little bit. Don't be afraid to just clean up everything, make it look great. And if you don't feel like doing that, then maybe just buy high end. Maybe just go ahead and buy high end then if you don't feel like cleaning it up and making it look good. But in my mind, that is the funnest part of it is the hunt, the cleanup and the enjoyment of seeing that and people look at it and be like, wow, you must have paid thousands, nope, under $100. So folks, go ahead and comment below and let me know what your hi-fi setup is and how your journey is going and maybe I can help you if you need it. And until then, you can catch me lounging to a melody and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye. Hey guys, and thank you for tuning in for this episode. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Manzamedia Art and Manzamedia on every other platform. If you like prints, I have an Etsy shop. If you want to buy some of my original artwork and fan artwork, I encourage you to like and subscribe and uh, give it a big thumbs up. Thank you.